They call it Deinonychus, terrible claw. Imagine the nightmare. 100 million years ago, this was the greatest killing machine on Earth. Now imagine the nightmare is not over. What if it escaped extinction and stowed away to the future? Behold, the dinosaurs of the modern world. and 70 million years ago, an ancient lagoon stretched across this Wyoming plain. As time sapped it of its waters, it died a gradual death. But what secrets did the lagoon take with it? Larry Martin of the University of Kansas has come here in search of those secrets. He believes that hidden in this lagoon is something he's been looking for for nearly a decade, the fossil of an ancient bird. What he finds could unlock a mystery that has dogged and divided paleontologists for over a century. Did birds evolve from some ancient unknown creature 200 million years ago? And maybe the sea is, is regressing and we're getting closer to the shore. Or is the truth more fantastic? Oh, maybe about a foot down. Are they related to dinosaurs? I don't think that anybody has any real evidence to prove that birds are derived from dinosaurs. Birds evolved from reptiles separately from dinosaurs. They have their own separate lineage. The proof lies somewhere in the fossil record. These limestone beds are a natural library. Sediment laid down in the lagoon over millions of years. Recorded life day by day, page by page. All right, now, what we have here is a natural book. It's a very thin bedded lithographic limestone. We can see that there are individual pages here which represents strata. We don't know how much time there is between the pages, maybe only a day, possibly as much as a year, certainly not much more than that. But the point is that we can go through this very much the way that you read a book. We can split open these pages maybe remove a chapter, like so. And then we can come down here and we can look at this. And we're able to read it page by page, you see, just like a book. And on this particular page, we find a lot of some of these shore bugs. One there, one over here, and one here. Oh, a couple there, there's a lot of them on here. And that's what's so good about this locality. We're getting lots and lots of these insects. And that's really great, because that tells me that I'm real close to shore, and if I'm real close to shore, I might get my bird. For Larry Martin, this is a game of chance, but chance is how the story first began. In 1877, workers in a German limestone quarry stumbled upon a creature caught in time. Although the fossil was 150 million years old, the details were breathtaking. It had a long, bony tail, a bird-like mouth, with reptilian teeth and claws on the tip of what looked like a wing. But what startled scientists 
was the clear impression of feathers. Called Archaeopteryx, or ancient feather, here was a mythological creature, half bird, half reptile. Thomas Huxley, Darwin's right-hand man, was determined to put the science behind the myth. If birds were related to reptiles, there had to be an intermediate creature, a missing link between the two. Huxley was convinced it was a dinosaur. He based his theory on several remarkable similarities. Birds walk on two legs, so did fast meat-eating dinosaurs. Both have hollow bones. Both have three toes pointing forward, with the main toe pointing backward. And both share the same unique ankle joint and the same hip bone. In some dinosaurs, it's turned around exactly as in birds. Huxley's argument, though compelling, fell out of favor for lack of evidence. But nearly a century later, it would reappear with a vengeance. Deinonychus, the name means terrible claw. Five feet tall and 12 feet long, fast moving and merciless, it killed like a kickboxer with a switchblade. Discovered in 1970 by paleontologist John Ostrom of Yale University, its potential to kill was obvious, but its anatomy was even more startling. On a chance visit to Amsterdam, Ostrom was able to examine one of the rare examples of Archaeopteryx. What he saw was a clear echo of Deinonychus. Except for the difference in size, the fingers and claws of Deinonychus and Archaeopteryx seemed almost identical. The scientific community reeled at the evidence. Could birds really be dinosaurs? Did Deinonychus escape extinction and stow away to the future? After a century, the debate would once again ignite the scientific world. If birds are dinosaurs, then the evidence is all around us. For paleontologist Bob Bakker of the University of Wyoming Geological Museum, birds form a living link with the past. What you see before you is your dinosaurian head and neck working, that graceful S-shaped curve going zap, zap, zap. Lightweight neck, full of air. Air pa passages in the head and along the neck, right into the torso. The dark spot behind the eye is the eardrum, big eardrum, bigger nars. Pretty good, too, for picking up most frequencies. The eyes, though, are better than ours. They see a wider range of colors. Dinosaur eyes would be like that. And the brain? Well, that, the brain in that emu is about the size that you would get in a Deinonychus, medium-sized raptor. Pretty intelligent, the smartest animal in its world in the Cretaceous, at least. It's not exaggeration to say we're still in the age of dinosaurs because there are 9,300 species of birds in the world, every one of them a direct descendant of a small raptor-like dino. For Bakker, the bird family tree is no mystery. From early cold-blooded reptiles came the first dinosaurs. Then came the fast-moving two-legged raptors, from them evolved creatures like Archaeopteryx, leading directly to modern birds. If Bakker's right, Thanksgiving will never be the same. Okay, I love to do this. I do this every Thanksgiving. You may think that this is a turkey. This is not a turkey. This is a dinosaur. This is a raptor, and I can prove it to you. The hand of the turkey, wonderful device. The hand of a Z turkey has a thumb and two fingers stuck together, index finger and middle finger, all attached together to make a swivel. Zink, 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 zink. No other animal alive today except birds have that kind of hand. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. 
<laughs> now, for your edification, here is a dinosaur hand, thumb, and two fingers stuck together, and a swivel joint at the top. So the whole thing goes back and forth. Zink, da zink, da zink. That is a turkey hand. Turkey with a bad attitude, but that's a turkey hand. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Here at the lower end of the shin is the joint for the ankle. It rolls around like that. It's a great big tendon that goes to the foot, flexes the foot backwards. Whack, 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 okay? And right here, at the bottom of your dinosaur shin bone is the same sort of joint. No other animal extinct or living besides birds and dinosaurs have this wraparound ankle bone. And finally, look how wide the hip bones are. That's all four thigh muscles, all that dark meat. Look at all the dark meat over here. Look at immense. If you dissect any other kind of animal besides a bird, you don't find wide thighs. You know, birds have wide thighs. Deinonychus has a thigh just like that. Nearly all dinosaurs do. So from shoulder to hip to knee to ankle, a turkey is a dinosaur. It is a living a raptor. Do you believe that? Well, somebody like Bob Backer might say that uh, if you see a flock of birds today, you've really seen a flock of dinosaurs. Well, I'll tell you what, I think you've just seen a flock of birds. Larry Martin believes birds evolved directly from reptiles. He sees no connection between birds and dinosaurs on the family tree. For him, timing is everything. He's quick to point out a flaw in Bacher's theory, a single irrefutable piece of logic. The dates are wrong. One of the major problems with the dinosaur hypothesis is that the dinosaurs that they compare to Archaeopteryx, like Deinonychus, for instance, are all younger than Archaeopteryx. And so it's, it's really difficult to be younger than your grandparents. Archaeopteryx is 150 million years old. The earliest raptor ever found is 50 million years younger. Unless an older raptor is discovered, the theory doesn't add up. Until then, Larry Martin continues to chase his own evidence. Here and there. Well, find the big one. Ooh, ooh, we've, we've, got, we've got a fish here, Dr. Martin. Yeah, is it I a think. Good one? Well, come over, take a look. Okay. There's the mega side. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a really dark matrix. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to see it in that. I like that. We'll go back, see if you can get a bird. Okay. All right. Well, that's we. Well, let's see. The birds ate the fish, didn't they? Right. That's okay. a good place. Well, well then we've Here's got the bird. food. We've got the bottom of the food chain going here. Every clue is vital. Fossils are scarce. In 1984, Martin's hopes were raised by a stunning discovery. In the small town of Post, Texas seven fossil bones were unearthed. The creature was dubbed Proto-Avis, or early bird. Proto-Avis is a great piece of evidence for my argument. Uh, it has a special type of articulation uh, for the jaw, which is otherwise only found in birds. And if that's correctly interpreted, then I think you reasonably could argue that it's a bird. What's crucial is the age of Proto-Avis. It lived 225 million years ago, before true dinosaurs appeared. Proto-Avis supports Martin's theory, if he can prove it's a bird. Unfortunately, no feathers were found. Without feathers, Proto-Avis remains controversial. And Martin still faces the daunting task of finding a creature that mastered the air long before dinosaurs ruled the Earth. I think this means that both the insects and the fish are occurring very close to the shoreline. That's, that's what we're really counting on. I don't suspect these early birds could fly too well, so we don't expect them to get too far out to sea. We've found a place that's the right age. It's Jurassic, 
uh, a little older than the rocks that Archaeopteryx occur in, so it ought to have some new information on the question. The rocks are the right sort of environment to preserve very detailed information. If, the, if we find a skeleton of a bird here, we will find feathers with it, just like they find with the Archaeopteryx. And it's just a matter now of, of looking. And I would greatly enjoy being able to present a bird from this unit to Bob Backer. And I think that probably it would serve my cause. I think it would prove my case. But proof may not lie in the earth. Clues may come from the realm of the bird, the air. Flight is the mark of a bird. Raptors moved at great speed, but could they have taken to the air? Is it possible? Could dinosaurs fly? Powered flight is no accident of evolution. It's a complex event. Flight demands that a creature have feathers to master the air. But first, those feathers need to get airborne. Did a dinosaur have the basic essentials to fly? Bob Bakker says yes. This is a baby raptor five days old. Well, it's an emu five days old, but a baby raptor would look a lot like this. There's an idea that feathers first evolved to insulate a chick. Not a bad idea. So if we could go back in time, maybe we'd see a baby Deinonychus with feathers. And raptors had wraparound fingers with sharp claws. So a, a raptor could climb with its hands. And raptors also had a back-grabbing toe behind the main toes, and it could grab bark with that toe, too. In other words, what a raptor could do is climb. Now, why is that important? Because birds fly. How did they fly? First, you've got to get the bird up in the tree. And to get the bird up in the tree, you've got to have climbing hands and climbing feet, and raptors had those. Once your bird is in the tree, it can begin experimenting. It can. Uh, put its arms out and try gliding. And once it's gliding, that's a short step to powered flight. It's not hard at all to see how flight in birds evolved from raptors in trees. But for Larry Martin, Deinonychus in a tree is a flight of fancy. Uh, this is a hawk, and you can see that its body's actually flattened like this. And if you look here at its feet, you can see that it has these very long recurved claws. And this claw right here, this toe, actually is turned in the opposite direction of the other toes. That's what's really meant by a uh, backward facing uh, claw. Now, I know that Dr. Backer has suggested that maybe some dinosaurs are like this, and that maybe even a dinosaur like Deinonychus may have been able to climb trees and perch on limbs. I only want to point out to you that Deinonychus and I are really just about the same size. If you're the, comfortable with the idea of my climbing a tree and perching on a limb, then perhaps you should believe Dr. Backer. I think you can immediately see that it's not very well designed to climb a tree. Can you imagine trying to climb a tree on your, on your tippy toes with your uh, arms and legs held straight like that? And this animal can't change that posture. Its arms and its legs are fixed like this, so it would have to climb a tree like so. Uh, once it's up in the tree and it jumps out, it's not shaped like, oh, say, this model of Archaeopteryx here. Not a very great model, but it makes a point. You notice it's flattened this way, so that when it's falling, it actually gets a lift from its body. You can imagine, you can imagine what would happen if this thing jumped out of the tree with its narrowly compressed body. It just falls straight down. And besides that, its arms are fixed in this posture. Birds have a different structural design. A wishbone extends from shoulder to shoulder, 
holding the ball and socket joints in place. This allows outward movement of the limbs so their wings can move up and down. If we took this velociraptor right here and tried to make a wing out of it, we might have to break the arm right off in order to do it. Can't do it with a velociraptor. They told me I could do it, however, with Godzilla. So we'll see. They told me wrong. <laughs> fixed bones, fixed ideas. Locked in opposition, Bakker and Martin continue their search. One for an ancient raptor, one for an ancient bird. But as divergent as their theories are, both cling to a fundamental tenet of evolution. At the root of the family tree lies a common, undeniable ancestor. Bob uh, Backer and I do agree on some things. Uh, we agree that the ancestry of birds is to be sought in the great group of reptiles called archosaurs. And we agree that birds are derived from something that most of us would call a reptile. An old assumption, but even that is under attack from a new technology. The dino bird debate is now entering the 21st century. London's Trafalgar Square is a gathering place for feeding birds, or dinosaurs, depending on who you believe. For Brian Gardner of King's College, there's no question. These are ancient raptors. A hundred million years later, and still not much comes between them and food. But Gardner's interest goes beyond the debate and what the fossil record reveals about birds and dinosaurs. He's using the high-tech study of DNA to see if they really are related to reptiles. Birds are warm-blooded. Reptiles, cold-blooded. To find out who's related to who, he compared DNA samples from birds, reptiles, and another warm-blooded creature, a mammal. The results were surprising. If dinosaurs in birds evolved from reptiles some 270 million years ago, then we would expect to see a great similarity between the DNA of birds and reptiles. But we don't. In fact, when we come to look, we find that the DNA of birds is closest to that of mammals, in other words, the other warm-blooded group. Therefore, birds are much more closely related to other warm-blooded animals than they are to reptiles. Birds are graceful, agile, and fleet of wing. If they are warm-blooded, could their kin be warm-blooded dinosaurs? What this does is, once and for all, remove that lingering idea that dinosaurs are reptiles. They cannot be reptiles. They're warm-blooded relatives of birds. There's no way that we can imagine dinosaurs as reptiles, slow, ponderous creatures. They were warm-blooded bird ancestors. Or were they? Perhaps the proof lays hidden in the most elusive fossil of them all. A strand of DNA from a dinosaur. Until science fiction becomes fact, there may be no end to the debate over dinosaurs in the air. <laughs>